we live in a day and age where everybody and their mama want to be an entrepreneur. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing or a good thing. But one thing that I do know as someone who has been a full-time entrepreneur for over seven years, that this thing is not for everybody. And we're going to talk about it with my special guest today, Brian Oles. Everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Keandra Jackson Show. I am your host, licensed marriage and family therapist, Keandra Jackson. And per usual, we have a great show for you today. Brian and I have had so many long conversations about purpose and entrepreneurship. And baby, I have to spin the block and bring y'all part two because Brian has been on our show before. So if you don't know, Brian is one of my good friends, but he's also the founder and the creator of Black Speakers Rock, which is an amazing amazing platform for new and emerging speakers. So if you are one of those people who want to step up your speaking game, that is the platform to join. I think there's over like 20,000 members on this platform. And he's really passionate about so many things, but we have been on this entrepreneur journey together for a while now. And honey, when you are in the business and entrepreneur space, you need a friend, you need a business bestie who is going to hold you up because the mindset that you have to have in entrepreneurship to keep going during the times where you wanna quit, to keep going when things are not working out, to keep going when the revenue is not there is a whole thing. And so Brian and I have been on this journey together. And so today we are going to talk about the mindset that you have to have and amongst some other things as an entrepreneur to be as successful as you possibly can. Because I personally don't, I personally believe that not everybody is meant and cut out for this, but then there's a whole bunch of people who are in a nine to five who are supposed to to be entrepreneurs, whether that is part-time or full-time. So please allow me to welcome to the show, Dr. Brian Oh, Brian, welcome to the Keandra Jackson Show. I am so excited to have you here. You have no idea how many gems I know you're going to drop. And I'm so excited to introduce you to my audience because I know you personally, and we have been on this entrepreneur journey for a very long time. I'll, yes, Lord. It's, it's been crazy. I'm talking about, for me, it's been almost six, almost seven years, actually. And so thinking about this journey that we have been on together just as entrepreneurs in general, I'm wondering from you, because you've been in corporate America, nine to five, you know, you grinded and, you know, did all of the things that you progressed. I want to hear from you, like, what is the, the mindset that you have to have in order to pursue your passion and specifically like to pursue your passion if you desire to be your own like business owner or entrepreneur like what does that mindset look like and what does it have to be before you even start that journey to begin with yeah so you know same with you i think uh you know when i launched my company uh black speakers network that was in 2016 and i think that um you know, my mindset at the time was certainly to uh, kind of escape the nine to five grind, as you mentioned, but it was also uh, it wasn't just that, like I really wanted to um, impact uh, the speaking world, um, add diversity um, to, you know, amplify black voices. And so that's something that kind of operated behind the scenes. But, you know, my mindset has continuously evolved because one of the things that was most important to me um, just growing up as a black man in America um, from not a pedigree or, you know, going to the best schools, like my focus was on survival. You know, it wasn't on like changing the world. It wasn't on trying to, uh, you know, cure humanity's woes. <laughs> like I wanted to, you know, not get my car repoed. I wanted to make sure my like lights were on. I wanted to uh, go to the gas station, swipe the card and not get the little like go see gas station attendant like a <laughs> message on there like all of those things uh were very much rooted in uh survival so that's kind of like level one um and i think um as uh first generation entrepreneurs uh especially some of that is actually healthy because honestly we can get like really comfortable i think by um not being as aggressive sometimes with our ideas and just kind of like letting them linger versus uh, doing whatever it takes. That doing whatever it takes mindset um, provides us with um, 
a sense of urgency that allows us to take action without being overly critical. And I think sometimes when people have, have too much money, when they're too comfortable, when it got too much education, uh, it allows them to go a little bit more slowly. And so you're not able to grow at the scale that uh, other people can. Uh, so first mindset was survival. Once I got past the survival stage and now I was able to move on to uh, kind of, hey, um, let's let's look more at impact now that the mindset shift to, OK, uh, do I really like what is what does success really look like for me in this specific domain? And for a lot of entrepreneurs, um, you can kind of get caught up into, you know, in Keandra, you know, we talked about this a lot. There are a lot of um, really um, sexy vanity metrics out there to chase uh, that really have no impact on uh, how successful you actually are. And that could be everything from how many followers you have on Instagram to, you know, how many uh, pitch airplane, you know, pictures you're taking and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, it's really um, boiling down to, you know, are you actually, is your business profitable? And then is that profit actually fueling um, a, a, a bigger picture because most of us, you know, we can have companies that are doing revenue, uh, but just because you're doing, you know, and, and this is another sexy thing we chase, like everybody wants a six figure business. Well, you know, just because you have a six figure business doesn't mean you're living a six figure lifestyle. And and honestly, even a six figure lifestyle, you know, you're in L.A., I'm in the DMV, six figures like a hundred thousand dollars by itself doesn't buy you much. <laughs> like, Please break you know. it down. Let the people know. <laughs> It does, because yeah, I, there's also this difference of like my business making six figures and like me as a person of my business making six like that's two different things and I don't think people really understand the differences between that because people just throw off these six and seven figure numbers and send in screenshots of their PayPal and their Venmo and it's like girl you not you not pocketing that money you're not taking it home because taxes are real they are real and all of those things you just mentioned are real and so that's why I love how you open the episode talking about purpose because the purpose will um, dictate which of those things you actually value. And so if your purpose is to um, establish a, um, a a personal like nest egg for yourself where you no longer have to really work at all unless you choose to, then your actions that you're taking are going to be a lot different than if you're just looking to um, you know, collect followers and do all those other things. And so at the end of the day, though, my mind, when my mindset shifted to now from survival to impact, it allowed me to have a uh, much broader perspective and to build my company in a way that was less uh, fo focused on uh, hustle culture. You know, I wasn't focused on, you know, grinding like, you know, 15 hours a day. It placed a strong um, premium for me on a couple of different things. I actually have them um, up on my wall. Uh, for this year as areas of priority, but health and wellness is a big one. So, you know, getting to the gym a couple of days a week, being more mindful of the things that I eat, um, balancing how much time I actually am spending working versus how much time I'm actually spending with myself or family or just things I enjoy, um, staying in therapy, uh, creating um, intentional uh, breaks uh, in my uh, yearly routine to allow myself to recharge. All of those things had to become very important because you can't pour from an empty cup. Um, and so those are that, that, that kind of changed immediately. And so what that meant for me is that uh, while other people, and, and you know, this Keandra, you know, I'm coming from the speaker world. Um, a lot of speakers will kind of start their journey and their, um, their purpose isn't and you know not to say they're not interested in you know impacting people that's not the truth that's not the case i think most people are but they're they're focused much more on um like vanity like ego like i just want to be on stage i just want to you know fly i just want to speak you know i just want to you know be recognized for my expertise and you should but when that starts changing from um from just like survival and ego, then you're able to start thinking about, okay, well, how sustainable is this? Well, for most people being on a plane a hundred times, a hundred days out of the year, isn't very sustainable. Uh, you can get burned out really quickly, you know? Um, and if, if that's your thing, that's great. But again, establishing what that means. And that's always been a constant fine tuning that I've had to do. 
And that's so interesting too, because to bring it, you know, down to kind of just like, you know, I'm real. So <laughs> to to even see the difference in how you're navigating all of the things that you just mentioned in real life, like because we're real friends, like you really do those things. I remember very early on, like we were grinding and just trying to build and get to that space. And then there's days now where I'll hit you up like, hey, Brian, what's up? Like, what you doing today? How you doing? He's like, I'm chilling. I'm like, you working? <laughs> nope. <laughs> I got all my systems in place. The emails is scheduled. My team is doing what they need to do. I'm over here playing a video game. And I'm like, this is what I'm talking about though, right? And that's not in a negative sense, but when you have prioritized things, when you have put things in place, when you have worked hard and and Brian is very big on systems, y'all. Like he is the king of systems, setting it up, automation, like letting things, let things work for you. He be telling me about AI and all of these really high tech things. And I'm so thankful to have someone in my life who understands that it's not just about working, but it's about like living your life within that context. And we don't want to look up a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now to be like, we worked so hard that we didn't get a chance to enjoy the fruit of our labor. I want to hear from you. What is the number one thing, the number one thing? If you can tell anybody who's currently an entrepreneur, like what is the thing that they need to do or personality trait or whatever that they need to have in order to sustain being a successful entrepreneur or business owner? Yeah. So to me, I think um, the the number one thing is um, most entrepreneurs, the thing that they're lacking, I, I don't think most people are lacking creativity. I don't think most people are lacking. Sometimes people talk about fear, but I actually don't even think fear is a big thing because when when the motivation is clear and we believe, you know, the thing that we're going after is possible, fear doesn't really matter uh, as much. The number one thing I think people um, really need to embrace is um, something that's kind of boring, but I think is going to serve people really well. And that is um, getting organized. And I'm saying that because, I mean, you know this, I mean, we're recording this, uh, you know, episode right now. There is, I can't imagine how many steps that went into, I mean, I do know some of them because, you know, I was part of it, but, you know, you had the right email copy, you had to get an assistant, you had to get a calendar tool, you had to make sure the calendar tool worked, you had to go buy equipment, lights, you had to, um, you know, test all that stuff out, make sure it worked, even after the episode is done, it still needs to go somewhere, you know, you need to track the analytics on that side. And so um, I, I, I think, you know, when people say, um, you know, uh, the best idea, like, you know, the best ideas are worth the most amount of money. And I'm like, uh, ideas are essentially worthless. The people that uh, get stuff done, the people who can execute are the individuals who are actually going to um, see their purpose through fruition. And you can't do that unless you're organized. Now, if you're not a like naturally organized person, I think the number one thing to do is to essentially get somebody in your life who is and make sure that that person understands your role, make sure they understand what you are, your business, what you are looking to accomplish and get that person um, like rolling right beside you to make sure nothing gets dropped. But ultimately you need to be the person that keeps a tight calendar. You need to be a person that can create a task list. You need to be the person that can get an Excel spreadsheet, put something into a project, manage it and get it over the finish line uh, because everybody else that's, you know, talking about writing books or speaking or starting businesses or creating a service, like we could talk about stuff all day long, but nothing happens until it gets into your actual calendar and either you do it or you got to delegate it to somebody else to get that thing done. That would be the biggest thing, I think. Woo, I did not expect you to say that. So being organized apps, it all makes 100% sense. I think that if you're not organized, especially as an entrepreneur or business owner, you will literally shoot yourself in the foot and you will not be able to advance or go any further, to be honest with you. So thank you for bringing that to the forefront because I think that's something that we don't talk about enough. I am just so excited that you were able to be a part of the Keandra Jackson show. And I'm sure there's going to be people who want to stay connected with you. So please tell everybody very briefly how they can stay connected with you and all of the amazing things that you will continue to do. 
Oh, well, yeah, you could just Google me. Uh, that'd be fine. Uh, that's I. You could find me on whatever platform of your choice through that way. Uh, my preference is LinkedIn. So you can check me out on LinkedIn. Uh, Brian J. Olds. It's Olds like Oldsmobile. And um, yeah, I would love to stay connected uh, to your audience. Uh, Keandra, obviously, anybody's interested in speaking can go to blackspeakersnetwork.com as well. And uh, I'm looking forward to staying in touch. Love it. Love it. Thank you so much for your time. And I'm sure you will not be a stranger to the Keandra Jackson show. See you soon. I told y'all that Brian was going to bring the heat and the fire. So no matter where you are on this entrepreneur journey, as I give you my final thoughts, because it's a wrap, I want you to be encouraged. So whether you are in a nine to five and you're like, whoop, yep, I knew that entrepreneurship was not for me. Whether you are somebody who is going to tackle this and go all in full time and quit their regular job. Or if you are someone who's going to do like parallel, like I'm going to work my regular nine to five, but I'm also going to do like a little side hustle. Wherever you find yourself on this journey, make sure that it's a good fit for you. Make sure that you are taking all of the precautions that you need to really understand your business and your industry so you can be as successful as possible. This is why we see so many businesses fail within the first five years because they don't have the mindset that they need to have to begin, but also the mindset that they need to have to continue to be successful as well. I cannot tell you that I have the same mindset that I had when I first started over seven years ago that I have now. Oh no, baby, it's a completely different ball game. And I can imagine that that is going to change, that is going to grow, and that is going to evolve as I continue to be my best self and to have a thriving business. So thank you so much for watching another episode of the Keandra Jackson Show, and I will see you next time. Be blessed. Bye.